Okay, I will call the meeting of the September 14th, 2023 TRPA hearings officer meeting to order at 2 p.m. My name is Marcia Birch and I'll be serving as the hearings officer today. Uh, first item, are there any changes to the agenda? No, no changes. So I'll approve the agenda as it was posted. Um, next item are public interest comments. These are uh, items for no action. Any member of the public who wishes to address the hearings officer on any item that is not listed as a public hearing item on the agenda may do so at this time. Public comments on any public hearing item will be taken, taken at the time those agenda items are heard. The hearings officer is prohibited by law from taking immediate action on or discussing issues raised by the public that are not listed on the agenda. So I'll start by asking if there's anyone in the room who has a public interest comment. Seeing none, uh, Jessica, if you could go online and see if we have any public interest comments. Any member of the public would like to address the hearings officer at this time, please raise your hand now by clicking on the raised hand at the bottom of your Zoom screen or by dialing star nine if you're joined by telephone. There are no hands raised. All right, so seeing no public interest comments, so I'll close that item uh, and do an announcement of appeal rights. Any decision of the hearings officer is appealable to the TRPA governing board. The notice of appeal, which can be found on TRPA's website and associated fees, must be filed within 21 days of the hearings officer's decision. All right, we will move on to our public hearing items. The first item, item 5A, Four Season Estates, Grand Lebakan, AT&T Telecommunications Facility, 725 Grand Lebakan Road, Tahoe City, Foster County, California, Assessor's Parcel Numbers 095-510-049, 095-510-002, and 095-510-003. That is TRPA file number ERSP 2021-1636. All right, Bridget. That's fine. Uh, Jessica, just for uh, like reference purposes, mm -hmm. will you please scroll it to the um, site plan? Absolutely. Just it kind of shows that they're kind of right out. There might be page two or three. Yeah, the this color one? Color. Yep. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Bridget Cornell, and I am a planner in the uh, permitting and compliance department with the Tahoe Regional Planning Agency. As the hearings officer just mentioned, this is um, TRP file number ERSP 2021-1636, the three parcel numbers that were mentioned before. And all three of these parcels are within the Grand Lebakan Tahoe Resort, um, just south of Tahoe City. The project, again, involves three parcels. I'll reiterate them again, 095-510-049, 095-510-002 and 095-510-003. Um, the, again, ground, the, this particular area is off of Highway 89, just south of Tahoe City, a couple miles south of Tahoe City. It is within the Grand Lebakan Subdistrict within the, let's see if I get this right, Placer County Tahoe Basin Area Plan. And in that subdistrict, Transmission and receiving facilities require what Placer County refers to as a conditional use permit, and a conditional use permit is processed as a special use by the Tahoe Regional Planning Agency. So that is why it's coming before uh, the hearings officer today is because of the special use designation. So AT&T is proposing to install four antennas on two different buildings within the Grand Lebakan Resort. Um, and, they're, and these antennas are just essentially attached to the sides of the structure. I don't know if you want me to point anything out or maybe we've all seen these plans. Um, they only go up, uh, does anybody, do you wanna look at the elevations? Just, that's, just, that's fine. Is that fine to say like yeah. that? Okay. Yeah. Because all of these are just attached on the side of the buildings and Kevin will go into them in more detail um, during his presentation. So they just extend a tiny bit above the um, roof ridge line of each one. But again, there are four antennas installed on two, a total of four antennas on two buildings. 
Um, they are on the Deer Wander Building and the Bear Paw Building, and the equipment will be housed in an existing, the existing Main Lodge Building. Uh, so other than, and I, the, Kevin, you might have to correct this if I'm stating this incorrectly, but the, um, the utilities will be corrected, connected via an existing conduit. I don't think there's any ground disturbance whatsoever with this project, no changes to land coverage, no ground disturbance. And the um, again, the equipment will all be housed in the main uh, lodge building. The uh, So this has been a very long ongoing process. Uh, the applicants have been very patient in all the information that we have requested. We have received, we did send out a notice of application in early August, as well as a notice for the public hearing. For this project, um, Early on in the noticing process, we had received exactly two comments regarding it. One was in direct support, another was just asking for some specific information regarding the project. And then we have since received numerous, and I'll just say numerous because I don't know what the last count was, um, public comments just regarding the use of cellular facilities in general. Um, as far as I could tell in the, all the other emails that I had read, um, there were no comments specific to the Grand Lavacum project. Uh, so that is the basics of the project. Kevin Gallagher is here with Complete Wireless, and he will present a few more details of the project. And then both of us are available to answer any questions. That's it. That's it for me. Thank you. All right. Thank and you, Richard. Kevin Gallagher. I'm ready. Presentation up just one second. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Uh, thank you all uh, for your time this afternoon. Uh, I will uh, try to be as brief as I can, though it is against my nature. Uh, what this project is, it is a small cell site to cover the uh, Grand Bakken Resort area. Uh, well, I'll kind of run through the design uh, quickly, um, then just to stress there's no change in land coverage or no new ground disturbance in connection with the property. Um, this is an area that has very poor coverage. Uh, in fact, there's really no coverage at all in this area. Uh, wireless coverage requires line of sight. Um, Grand Bakken uh, Resort is surrounded by hills uh, and uh, just about entirely blocked uh, from outside coverage. Uh, in addition, uh, there is a relatively large number of people in a relatively small, uh, fairly confined space. And when that happens, even when there is coverage, uh, there are often issues uh, with that coverage being overlooked. Uh, so this site was designed as a small cell site to cover the local resort area. Uh, we uh, originally uh, walked this site a couple years ago. The goal was to find the least intrusive way of covering the resort. Um, uh, generally, when we try to do these small cell things, we'll just be limited to one on the antenna uh, at a location that can cover uh, the local area. Uh, in this instance, because of all the elevation changes within the resort, I, I don't know how familiar you are, but if, when you drive in, you go up and there's another level and then there's a, there's a higher level still. Um, so all of the antennas are placed on buildings uh, within uh, within the middle level so that they're able to uh, cover the resort uh, with the, uh, the minimum visual impact. Uh, next slide, please. Really should have moved that earlier. Um, these four total rooftop antennas, this is really what I was going into, but uh, the other detail is that the, um, the utilities will come in through the existing IT uh, building in the resort, all internet on the resort and all of the buildings goes through existing conduits from this kind of central location. Uh, so there are already conduits in place uh, for these buildings. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so this is uh, the coverage. This is actually a dual map. Um, the Another project, um, North Palo High School is in the upper right. Um, but if you can see down there, that area that is circled, uh, green is good in building coverage. Uh, yellow is in vehicle coverage. And uh, gray is really poor to no coverage. Um, so as you can see, that circle is where the resort is located. Uh, and there's no coverage um, to, there's no coverage to speak of there. Um, next slide, please. Um, that is the coverage um, that this uh, small cell facility will provide. Uh, there will be coverage on there. Uh, it will go from an uncovered area to a covered area. Um, the, uh, the area has, they, they, they reached out to specifically request it, uh, given the lack of coverage at present. Uh, next slide, please. 
Um, this is just kind of that area. I zoomed in just to give you an idea. You can kind of see the topography there. Um, the project location that's marked, uh, that's kind of the center of the resort area. Uh, to the north, you can see Highway 89 um, snaking around. And then, of course, uh, the lake. Uh, next slide, please. Um, that's kind of a zoomed in area showing uh, the coverage. Apologies for the, the lower resolution there, but I, I think it kind of gets the idea that there is very little in the way of coverage. And then uh, next slide, please. Um, that is the coverage that will be provided by the facility. Uh, so uh, residents, uh, visitors, guests, travelers at the Grand Lavacan Resort will have a reliable phone service, uh, which they do not at present. Uh, next slide, please. Um, this is just to briefly run through where things are. Um, this is the same overhead view uh, that was in the site plans. Uh, and there are several views, uh, the one, two, three, four are the views that I'll show you on the following slides. Um, but they look at their three locations total on the two buildings. Two of the locations have one antenna apiece. Uh, the other location has two antennas. And again, this was, we looked at every building on that property to try to find the, the optimal way to cover everything. Uh, and this was, this was the only way uh, that it worked. Uh, so just to run through, uh, next slide, please. Um, this is the view from one of, one of the antennas. You can see it marked there. It's painted to match the building. Uh, it's a little bit lighter there because the building is in shadow, but you can kind of see the, how it matches uh, the, the brighter areas. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, this is the same antenna from the kind of as you're coming in the main entrance there. Um, you can see it uh, behind the trees. Um, these antennas, just to put this in perspective, are um, 40 inches tall. Um, they're all the same type of antenna in all of, all of the locations. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, this is another antenna. Uh, again, same deal. It's mounted at the edge of the rooftop. This particular one extends a few inches above um, the, the, uh, the roof. That was just necessary to clear. Um, uh, next slide, please. And then this is the last location. This one, um, there are two antennas. They're both kind of in shadows, uh, but it covers the remainder of the resort. Um, uh, it, so in a nutshell, um, we would request uh, that the hearing officers um, uh, follow the recommendations of staff and approve the project. Uh, it does comply uh, with all uh, regulations, uh, and it also does a, a, a follow all FCC RF safety regulations as well on that front. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions on the project um, that the uh, that the hearing officer uh, may have. I'm used to saying before, I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> it's okay. Um, thank you for that. Um, I do have a question, um, and this is about, and, and just in the findings, um, the way that it was referred to is um, that the power density is 0.35% of the FCC limit. And I'm assuming that that's the... Um, that's the general public limit, yeah. Right, and that's the radio frequency emissions. Yes. Right, yeah, okay. The, I just wanted to I make know. sure that power density yeah. is the same as... I, I took yeah. the language right out of the report, so I did just use the same reference that they used. That, that's okay. a good clarification. And and so that how is that um, measured? Oh, it's it is measured in turn. I could not tell you the units. I'm not an engineer. We did provide a report a report right. by an independent engineer who did the calculations. Um, yeah. but it's measured. It's it's measured. Um, what they do is we provide a third party engineer. Yeah. with one, all of the equipment, and then all of the frequencies uh, that will be broadcast on, mm -hmm. and they use that to calculate it. When they do their calculations, um, they assume that it is operating at absolute maximum capacity at all times, which is every possible person. Uh, in other words, it's to the point of it being overwhelmed, which we try not to do it. So it represents kind of the absolute worst case scenario. Uh -huh. uh, and then the measurements, uh, they do it over, over the, the overall area, uh, and then chart out what the um, what the calculations are for every point. So the further you are from the antennas, the lower it goes. The total um, energy, the total exposure level, is it's proportionate to the um, the inverse of the square of the distance. Mm -hmm. So if you um, are say uh, you're you're ten feet away, mm -hmm. and then you move out so a hundred feet away, you're ten times further away. Uh, the RF levels at this spot that is 10 times further away. They're not 10 times reduced, they're 100 times reduced. So it drops off very quickly, um, which is, anyway, that's 
I, I don't know if I'm answering your question. Yes, you, are. Yes, you are. You um, are. It was my recollection that this was something that was done by a, a third party. Yes. yes. And, and, and I just to. wanted to confirm that that was the way it was. Yeah, done. that's the way AT&T does it for all sites. Yeah, yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. Okay. Well, I don't have any additional questions for the applicant or for staff. Okay. So uh, why don't we go ahead and take any public comments on this? Okay. If, maybe we'll start with the room yeah. and then go to online. Let's do that. So if any member of the public would like to address the hearings officer now, please raise your hand. Okay, all right. I'm going to room. And online, if any member of the public would like to address the hearings officer on this item, please raise your hand now by clicking on the raise hand at the bottom of your Zoom screen or by dialing star nine if you've joined by telephone. There are no hands. Okay. Well, um, I will say we did receive a number of comments. I did go through all of them. Um, I didn't read all of the attachments. Some of them were voluminous, but I did um, I did read each of them to see you know whether or not they were specific to this location and and none of them were, but I did get the gist of each of those comments. Um, so I am going to uh, go ahead. Um, and I'm sorry to interrupt you, but I thought because of that, because of the special use designation there, um, I didn't say this at the beginning, but we do need to approve the findings that are identified in the staff summary and then approve the project. Okay. This one has findings. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, okay. Yes, yeah. indeed. I went through okay. all of the findings <laughs> and yes. Okay. So I am going to approve the findings contained in the staff summary, uh, including a finding of no significant environmental effect. And I'm going to approve the project based on the staff summary and record evidence subject to the conditions maintained in the attached draft TRPA permit. Thank you. No, no. No, no, it's, it's just losing. Okay. Okay. Uh, we will move on to item 5B. And this is the Tahoe Truckee Unified School District, North Tahoe High School, AT&T Telecommunications Facility, 2949 Polaris Road, Tahoe City, Placer County, California. Assessor's parcel numbers 093-010-015, TRPA file number ERSP 2021-1948. Mm -hmm. And this is also group of yeah, Again, so Bridget <laughs> Cornell. Uh, a plan, I'm a planner in the Permitting and Complaints Department with the Tahoe Regional Planning Agency. As the hearing off hearings officer just mentioned, um, this project, this is a proposed AT&T telecommunications facility on, um, well, the property is owned by the Tahoe Truckee Unified School District in conjunction with AT&T, the uh, telecommunications facility is being proposed. The, uh, again, the Property location is 2949 Polaris Road, which is the campus of the North Tahoe High School. The North Tahoe High School shares the campus with the North Tahoe School, which is their middle, the North Tahoe Middle School. Um, again, the uh, parcel number, this one, it is just one, the whole campus is one parcel, 093-010-015. And as the hearings officer mentioned, it is TRP file number ERSP 2021-1948. So as I mentioned, the project is on. Oh, can, yeah, can we get that? Sorry, I'm sorry. Did I jump again on this? One? Sorry, uh, the um, PDF I had crashed, oh, and now okay. I can't get the server back open to get it back. I'm trying. Okay. It, I mean that the um, site plan on this one is really yeah. nice too. If you wish. this is what I had that crashed, I'll get it oh. back. Yes, yeah. exactly. <laughs> I'll, if you shall I keep going or do we want to get just that? keep going okay. and I will get there <laughs> if you if you're having trouble Jessica with the documents if you want to open the parcel tracker and just go to the parcel because that's really the same as what the site plan is okay it's kind of an aerial view I think I've got it here. okay we'll that, get to the right page that looks like it's still gray on the map there we are oh, there oh. apologies for the difficulty Oh, there we go. Yep, there it is. Well, yeah, you can just mm -hmm. leave it there from it. And then if we want to look at the um, elevations eventually. Okay. Okay, so 
let's continue that. Um, this parcel is in, within the North Tahoe High School subdistrict of the Placer County Tahoe Basin Area Plan. Uh, similar to the Grand Lavakan Project, telecommunications or transmission and receiving facilities are, are requiring special or conditional use permit within that subdistrict. And again, uh, TRP processes conditional use permits as special uses. And that is why this project requ is requiring um, hearings officer approval. This, um, again, very similar to the Gray on the Bucket project, this area has um, very poor cellular coverage in the area. And AT&T is proposing to install a single antenna attached to the side, attached to one of the buildings um, on the campus. If you look at the gray buildings on the site plan, they kind of make a, an upside down T on the bottom, and it's it's going to be right along the side of kind of the, the horizontal part of the T. This, in this case, the antenna will um, reach approximately nine feet above the building. In this case, the antenna is intended to only serve the campus, the school campus here. So it is a singular antenna. Um, it, it also, there is no ground disturbance uh, proposed on this one. The antenna will be attached to the side of one building and all of the utilities will be connected into a utility room within the North Taco High School building. Um, I did not receive any uh, comments specific to this particular project. Similar to the other project, we did receive a lot of um, comments in reference to this project, but they were more general in nature. So I did not receive any, any no, no comments that were specific to this project. So um, again, similar to the last one, we will be asking the hearing officer to approve the findings in the staff summary and then approve the project. And we have Matt Moore um, from Com Complete Wireless, who was here to uh, address the specifics of the project, and I think he is hopefully still available online. He is online. Okay. We'll ask him to unmute. Thank you, Bridget. Uh-huh. Get his presentation up. All right. All right. Can everybody hear me? Yes. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you, Bridget, and thank you, everyone, for having me. My name is Matthew Moore. Um, I am an artist agent of AT&T Mobility and the uh, project applicant for our North Tahoe project. Um, let's see, could we just go to the next slide, please? Um, as Bridget said, this is a very small installation. It's gonna consist of one um, rooftop antenna. It will extend about nine feet above the parapet line and be attached directly to the side of the building. Um, and it will extend about four feet over some other existing rooftop equipment that's up there. Um, this one, like Grand Lebakken, it's going to tie directly into the school's existing utilities. We'll go straight down through existing conduits, so there will be no ground disturbance, no excavation, no trench, um, nothing like that associated with the project at all. Um, next slide, please. Um, as Bridget said, the reason for this facility is specifically to bring improved coverage to the campus itself. Um, with that, the project has already gone through um, their DSA review process and they've the project. We also did send it to Placer County for review. Um, they are deferring to both TERPA and the DSA's judgment and the school district has signed off on the facility as well. Um, next slide, please. And similar, this map is gonna look very familiar to you. Um, same ones Kevin showed in this case, the North Tahoe is the circle further to the north. Um, so currently there, it's showing yellow. So that's going to be kind of no indoor coverage and decent to spotty um, outdoor coverage. And next map, please. And you can see with just the installation of this one rooftop antenna, it does cover that area. And um, if we go to the next slide, I do have some more kind of zoom images of that. Um, and so that's, again, kind of the coverage as it exists now. Um, Spotty outdoor coverage, really little to no indoor coverage whatsoever. Um, and then next slide, please. And then with the activation of this antenna, you can kind of see how it's going to cover the campus. It's going to cover, you know, the buildings and the classroom and stuff like that. And so um, you can see it is fairly, you know, limited to the coverage region. So it very much is intended to cover that school. Um, next slide, please. 
And these are just going to go through some um, photo simulations similar to like Kevin did. Um, they are from taking on four spots around the building. This one is going to be kind of to the northeast. Um, looking back at the main building, there's a parking lot and stuff back there. Um, and you can see the one little kind of antenna sticking up, but kind of against that skyline, you can't even really tell that it's there. Um, next slide, please. And let's see, this one is kind of coming from the southwest right along um, Polaris Road there. So if you're pulling into the front of the school, this is what you'll be looking at. But given the location of the antenna, you won't be able to see it from this approach. Um, next slide, please. This is um, taking from the northwest kind of back of the school in between the tennis courts that are there and kind of the main building and looking directly up at the antenna. So that is kind of the most visible spot for it. Um, yeah, you can see it kind of sticking up there. And then next slide, please. <clears throat> and this will be from the southeast along Polaris Road. We're getting kind of closer to, um, you know, heading in the direction of those residential homes and stuff along there. Um, and you can see from this angle, you might be able to see it just a little teeny bit, but there's really no visuals there whatsoever. And with that, that concludes my presentation, um, but I am more than happy to answer any questions that you might have. And I would also just read that we did submit um, an RF compliance report for this one too, um, generated by a third party and everything is well within compliance. All right, thank you very much. Well, I had similar questions on this one, but those have been answered. Mm -hmm. So I don't have any additional questions. So I'd like to open this up for public comment. Um, and we can start here in the room. Is anyone here to comment on this project? No? Seeing none, Jessica, if you could see if anyone online would like to comment. All right. If any member of the public would like to address the hearings officer on this item, please raise your hand now by clicking on the raised hand at the bottom of your Zoom screen or by dialing star nine if you've joined by telephone. There are no hands raised. All right, so we have no public comments. I will close the public hearing and take action on the project. I'll approve the findings contained in the staff summary, including a finding of no significant environmental effect. And I'll approve the project based on the staff summary, the record evidence, and subject to the conditions contained in the draft TRPA permit attached to the staff report. All right. Thank you. Thank you. And now we will move on to item 5C. This is single family residential rebuild for North Shore TVCA LLC, 6650 North Lake Boulevard, Tahoe Vista, Placer County, California. Assessor's parcel number 117-072-006. TRPA file number ERSP 2023-0707. And this is Julie Roll's item. Yes, hi, Julie Roll, um, planner with the Permitting and Compliance Department. Um, the proposed project is the demolition and reconstruction of an existing residence and accessory structures. Uh, it's located on a long, narrow littoral parcel located within the Placer County Tahoe Basin Area Plan Mixed Use Gateway West Subdistrict. Um, as a mixed use subdistrict, all residential uses require a minor use permit with Placer County, and TRPA treats this as a special use requiring hearings officer approval. Um, in this area, ground level residential uses are discouraged, but not prohibited. Mm -hmm. And in this case, um, the single family residential use is long standing, and they're just rebuilding. And as part of the rebuild, they're making environmental improvements. The project conforms with all TRPA regulations, including okay. land coverage, scenic mitigation, height, water quality, water quality BMPs. Um, and TRK staff therefore recommends approval of this proposed residential reconstruction. And I will just add that I've not received any public comment on this item and no proposed changes to the staff report that was posted. Thank you, Julie. Um, is there anyone here from the applicant who would like to make a statement to the hearing officer? Yeah. Good afternoon. 
Yeah, good afternoon. My name is Wyatt Ogilvy uh, in representation of the property owner. We don't have any comments. We read through the staff summary and findings subject to today's action and are in agreement. I'd just like to thank staff and reserve the right to respond to any questions the hearings officer has. It appears there's no, no public comment. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Wyatt. So I have a, I just have a clarification. And this has to do with the class 1B coverage. Okay. And it says, I think, I think it says one thing, but it might mean another. Um, in item, this is the chapter 30 findings in item C. It says no coverage is relocated into class 1B. And I think that means no coverage from a higher rated land capability is being relocated into 1B. That is true. Um, do we have Arlo on the line by chance? If yes, Arlo, throw up. This uh, went through outsource review by Arlo Suckham. So okay. if he well, it's available to respond to that. But okay, and I well, and I, in in finding A, it says significant amounts of coverage are relocated within Class One B areas. So my understanding is that there is One B coverage that's going to move within the One B uh, designation. Um, but nothing that's at a higher numbered land capability Correct. is coming into one. Right, we would not. Yes, we okay. would not allow that. Okay, There's, I just wanted to confirm yeah, that. I, I'd be happy to provide a little additional clarification. I mean, there's actually two areas of 1B. We have a, a class 1B backshore right off the lake. And then above that, we have a 1B beach environment or sandy area. And then out by the street, there's a small portion of class 5. And so no coverage is being relocated from the class five into the one B and actually the project proposes to significantly reduce coverage within the back shore, relocating it further from the boundary of the lake into the kind of more favorable beach environment section uh, further away from the back shore. And through the relocation, there's a significant amount of coverage being uh, permanently retired throughout the entire site within the class one B. Thank you for that. It it did seem to me after reviewing all of this that there was an environmental improvement that would uh, be resulting here. Um, okay. Thank you. Um, and I'll go ahead and open it up for uh, public comment. Is there anyone from the public who would like to make a comment on this uh, item? No, seeing none in the room. Jessica, will you see if anyone online would like to comment on this item? If any member of the public would like to address the hearings officer on this item, please raise your hand now by clicking on the raised hand at the bottom of your Zoom screen or by dialing star nine if you've joined by telephone. Mm -hmm. No hands raised. All right, seeing no public comment, I will close the public hearing and take action on this item. I will approve the findings contained in the staff summary, and including a finding of no significant environmental effect. And I will approve the project based on the staff summary, the record evidence, and subject to the conditions contained in the draft TRPA permit attached to the staff report. Right. Thank, Thank you. you. Appreciate everyone's time. All right. So we'll move on to. Uh, the last public hearing item, item 5D, this is Postmistress Properties LLC Land Capability Challenge, 1949 Glenbrook Inn Road, Glenbrook, Douglas County, Nevada. It's a portion of assessor's parcel number 1418-10-802-010, and it's TRPA file number LCAP. 2022-0779. And this is also Julie Roll item. Yes. Hi, this is Julie Roll again. Um, so this is, as Marcia stated, a land capability challenge. Uh, the parcel is currently verified as mostly class 1B, which is stream environment zone, and a small portion of class 6. Uh, the recommendation from staff is to change the land capability to class 1B, 4, and 6. Um, and this, this project was completed by our contract soil scientist, Phil Toll, and I believe he's on the line with us now, so he can give you a little more background on that. But before he does that, I'll just let you know we have not received any 
public comment specific to this project and no changes to the staff report. Thank you, Julie. Hi, this is Phil Schools. Can you hear me all right? Yes, we can. Okay. Uh, the uh, land capability challenge was uh, something that was completed by uh, what, or I'm sorry, soil scientist Roger Poff, who is a, a consultant who has done a lot of land capability challenges in the basin. And uh, he had a number of pits dug. I observed a couple of them and the other contractor for TRPA, Marshall uh, Monarchy, looked at all these pits and concurred with his findings. And so there's an area sort of in the south center of the property that qualifies as class six, since it has soils that are deep and don't have a water table in the upper 40 inches. And then as it's so, as a property gets a little steeper going to the north, uh, all there are also deep soils with groundwater a little bit lower in the profile, but uh, because it's steeper, it qualifies as class four. And then there are some lower portions of the property that are uh, what we consider to be stream environment zone where there's evidence of a water table, typically within 20 to 40 inches of the surface. So there's three different capability classes on the property. And uh, they're what they're proposing to do is, uh, you know, rebuild a house on this parcel. Right, thank you, Phil. I don't have any questions on this one. So uh, we'll go ahead and open it up for public comment. Okay. Anybody in the room have any comment? No hands raised in the room. If any member of the public would like to address the hearings officer on this item, please raise your hand now by clicking on the raised hand at the bottom of your Zoom screen or by dialing star nine if you've joined by telephone. There are no hands raised. All right, so we have no public comment. I will go ahead and close the public hearing and take action. I will approve the Postmistress Properties LLC Land Capability Challenge as it was prevented and presented in the staff summary. And we can adjourn at 2.37. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you.